Hi, my name is Yochiba, and this is a video tutorial on what Inkscape is and why you should use it. Let's get started. What is Inkscape? Inkscape is a vector graphics editor. Best of all, it's open source. Perhaps you know what open source means, but in case you don't, let me define it. Wikipedia, here I come. Okay, got it. Open source is the term most commonly applied to the source code of software that is available to the general blah 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 blah. To tell you the truth, the term open source is only important to us because it makes Inkscape free. With a few clicks, anyone with an internet connection can go to the Inkscape website, download, and install Inkscape. As such, it's a program that's great for anyone who wants to get creative on a tight budget. Another question is, why don't we just open up Photoshop and use that to get creative? First of all, Photoshop is expensive and cumbersome to install. Second of all, Photoshop is a completely different type of program than Inkscape. Let me explain. Photoshop is a bitmap imaging program, while Inkscape is a vector imaging program. Remember vectors from math class? You know, rectangular polar coordinates, triangles, the unit circle, the works. If you don't, I don't blame you. Here's a quick comparison between bitmap and vector images. As you can see, the vector image above is made up of smooth curves while the bitmap image below it is made of pixels. The key concept here is that vectors don't use pixels, they use curves and lines. Get it? If you don't, read the Wikipedia article on vector graphics which has a much more thorough description of vectors. Now that I've explained what an open source vector graphics editor is, it's time to tell you how you can use it. Posters, document graphics, websites, comics, brochures, wedding invitations, presentations, diagrams, newsletters, logos, and more. I hate sounding cliche, but the possibilities are truly endless. Interested in using Inkscape yet? If so, keep watching. It's time to explore Inkscape's user interface. So, you want to see the user interface. Let's start by opening up Inkscape. Inkscape, like many other programs, might seem a little intimidating at first, but don't worry, we'll get through it. It's pretty a easy actually. On the left are tools in the toolbox, as it's called, and these tools are used to create a variety of objects, from rectangles to circles to even polygons and text. At the top is a bar that serves uh, the usual functions of saving, opening, printing, etc., and a few other functions that we can perform on our objects. We'll learn about these later. At the center of your screen, you'll see an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, and it's only really there to serve as a size reference, so don't worry too much about it. To navigate through the white space, use your middle mouse wheel. Scroll up and down to get vertical movement. Hold down control and scroll your middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And click and drag your middle mouse wheel to pull across the area. Now one thing to note here is that while you're navigating through the white space, it's not the paper that's moving, it's the viewpoint. So let's start off by creating something say a circle. So click on the circle tool on the left in the toolbox. Click and drag your left mouse button anywhere on the plane to create the circle or ellipse. You'll see now that the circle has been created. To edit the circle we will click the cursor tool in the toolbox. After clicking the cursor tool, you'll see that there are arrows surrounding the circle. 
These arrows do various functions such as resize the object or even rotate it. The arrows here right now are there to resize the object on the X, Y, or both axes. Try them out. Now, if you want to lock the ratio between the width and height of your circle, go to the bar at the top. Between the width and height boxes, you'll see that there is a lock icon. It's very small. Click that. And then try resizing your object using the diagonal arrows. You'll see that the circle maintains its width-height ratio. Now, to get another set of arrows used in rotation, click the circle again. You'll see that the arrows change shape. They perform different functions. So try clicking the diagonal arrow and rotating the object. Use the top, bottom, and side arrows to stretch the object horizontally or vertically in a diagonal direction. To get back to the arrows uh, that you first encountered, click in the white space and then click the object again. You'll see the original arrows around your shape. Click and drag the shape to move it around the plane. And that's how you manipulate objects in Inkscape. Feel free to try out some of the other tools. Do a lot of experimenting. Thanks for watching this video tutorial. Watch the other ones for more advanced features of Inkscape and in no time you'll be an Inkscape Pro. Again, thanks for watching. Bye.